Hello, I would like to talk about ggplot2, one of the most used R packages in the world for plotting. This presentation can be found at my GitHub, by my username is Richard Bilderbeek, in the GitHub called Science. So this is what we all want when people start to use or want to use ggplot2. They think, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to create this one beautiful and clear plot for my millions of measurements. But this doesn't always work out in the end, and sometimes people fall back to the the, the normal R plotting functions. And that's exactly what this talk will be about. This talk will not be about. I'll zoom in a bit about. I won't give you millions of examples how to do awesome plots in ggplot2 because you can google those things yourself. Uh, the goal of this talk is I will try to convince you why you want to use ggplot2, uh, what the philosophy behind it is and this already makes you understand how to use it correctly and easily. I will show you some examples how to incorrectly use ggplot2. So this is the thing that beginners do and then they get disappointed in ggplot2 and they think that ggplot2 is hard. But they just simply didn't know how to, uh, what the idea behind ggplot2 is. So I will correct all these examples to show how to correctly use ggplot2. And then you'll find out that it's uh, rather easy. So um, this is an R Studio presentation, so all the code here run uh, and the, the, the figures it creates is always on the same slide, so there cannot be any typos in the code. Which is cool. So why would you use ggplot2? Well, it's a, it's a, instead of using different functions for all types of plot, you can learn, which is a learning curve, a grammar of graphics to express oneself in. So ggplot, gg means grammar of graphics, and I'll tell you why later on, or over the history. So you can express yourself in your plots using that grammar and that means you can mix and match different parts of that grammar to uh, to obtain exactly what you want and sometimes you you can create plots that don't even have names yet. The cool, also one of the cool things about ggplot2 is it's it is part of the tidyverse and it forces you to work tidily so your data must be in a data frame. It must have named columns and uh, the factors should be factors. So a factor is something, is a categorical uh, something, like a, a, it, so it can be a location, if not a GPS location, it can be treatment A or B, it can be left or right, that's, that's a category. You, you won't plot this on a uh, on a, you won't plot a line through different categories. Uh, so you have to work tidily and it's also recommended for teaching to use ggplot2 first so there are some camps how you should teach plotting in R well the mostly abandoned camp nowadays is to use the ad hoc R functions like uh, plot and line.plot and bar.plot and so on don't use those because they, uh, they allow you to use sloppy data which you also want to avoid while teaching you want your students to be productive as easily and smoothly as possible and but also not make them create incorrect results due to sloppiness so there are some examples in the literature in which some uh, outcomes of academic research were wrong because the student picked the wrong column because he or she used an index instead of the name of the column but also if you teach ggplot2 which is the good thing to do there are two camps you can use ggplot function or qplot and qplot is, is, is like a shorthand notation of the, the real ggplot function and I'm, I'm unsure about what how this settles down at the moment uh, I will show you just using the ggplot thing I won't do the, the shortcut using qplot I like the, the I don't think I, use, I will show too hard code I will use ggplot which you will always end up using when you grow up when we get more proficient than ggplot and I, I, I like to start there from, from, from the start. So the philosophy about ggplot2 came from 
uh, Leland Wilkinson. In 2005 he wrote this book called The Grammar of Graphics. And uh, in the next slide I will show you, it's not very important that you understand everything that's on this picture. It's a very smooth, glossy looking picture. But what you can see, he made a grammar of graphics starting at the bottom from data. And then there's an aesthetics layer, and a geometry layer, and a facets layer, and a statistics equipment, and a themes layer. And with this grammar of graphics, you could express yourself uh, how you would ha want to have your plot. So the most important thing for this presentation is you'll see me use aesthetics. And aesthetics are the scales on which the data is mapped. And so what will you put on your x-axis, your y-axis, are the categorical or continuous variables. So this grammar of graphics, it it's it it um, made it more. I uh, would say it less ad hoc. It gives you it, 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 it const, uh, like a, an idea, like a, a shared grammar to express yourself. So and then here we have Hayley Wickham, and um, so he was, I assume, inspired about this book. He he does quote it uh, in his book about ggplot2. And he's also very involved in uh, using tidy data. So here at the right, you see uh, there's a figure from his latest book, R for Data Science, he wrote with uh, Grolmond. And he says, well, if we have data, we have to import it, then we have to tidy the data. And if we have tidy data, then we can easily, sh or we should be able to easily, easily visualize that and, and communicate our results. And you'll see in this presentation that I won't, but that, that tidying and visualizing data should be two different steps. And I'll show you some examples. So the data I'll be using is frequency data. So I'll be sampling from a normal distribution, and really the normal normal distribution. So there's a, so there are treatments A and B, in the after a while, and they are they are exactly the same all. They, they uh, generate values drawn from a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Then we sample from them and want to plot the histogram and the density plots and so on. And so we're going to work on normal distributions. So I could have also used a time series, but I think this is because this is the data I uh, work with mostly, I'm most at ease with it. But I assume if you want to use timed data, like time series, from this presentation you will find it much easier to get started using that in ggplot2. So the first thing I'll do is I will create a, a messy data set because most beginners do this and I don't think this is too uncommon. So we're going to create a data frame, which is already that's already a good thing. We create a data frame. And you see that the the data frame it has one row because it's one let's say one treatment. So in, in the next example I will put treatment A and treatment B. And then these Z1, Z2, Z3, I could have picked any name for Z1, Z2, Z3, are replicates. So for th so that we actually we do a thousand measurements, we do a thousand draws from a random distribution. And we do that uh, a thousand times. So that means that the average of these values will be zero and uh, it will have a standard deviation of one. Alright, so I create this data frame and going to give well, column names here, which are Z1 to Z1000, and I'm going to plot this in a table using the knitter cable function because it, it gives you a nicer layout in the table. And I'm going to only show the first six columns because, well, it wouldn't fit on the slide and will look messy and so on. All right, so this is messy data, and I think it's typical for beginners to create such data. And they are, they are reluctant to put this th all these replicates in one column and then put the treatments. Uh, in a column left to it because they think it's it takes up more space and that's uh, actually that's a valid argument uh, messy data so this is the condensed form I think Haley calls it uh, the broad form of data and uh, because you um, y y you don't repeat the the, the information about the, the uh, about where these uh, values were drawn so if you could imagine is the location a researcher a, a date and that's only that's the same for all replicate values. And so in this simple example, it's, it looks a bit trivial. Like why wouldn't you just put it in a column? 
But you'll see in the next example when I put two treatments, you'll see that uh, it, it, it gets more natural. All right, so this is messy data, and um, messy data is very easy to plot without using uh, ggplot2. It's very easy not to use ggplot2 here. It's very convenient. You just use the hist function, and you transpose the messy data frame, and you get your nice histogram. Also note in this presentation, I will never ever try hard to make the plots look nice. Uh, it's mostly about the syntax here, the R code here. And of course, in the end, we replace the title and we make the the axis label bigger, especially in the press. You can't read it, perhaps. That's that's fine. I, I don't care about you being able to read it. I'll just show you the. It's mostly about the clean syntax and the, the the polishing. You have to do it on your own, and that's easy as well. All right. So, if the data is messy, you can easily fall back to uh, the, this custom R function hist. Right. Let's say we we really want to use that messy data with ggplot2. You'll see this is this is this is hard, and so we call ggplot with this data frame. Actually, I'm, so I'm creating a new data frame from our messy data frame here. I'm picking the first row, uh, all the rows in this case. I transpose that, so I get one column. I want to pick the first column only, and I call that z. And then I'm going to plot the z's, which are the values, as a histogram. So then we get a histogram. Of course, the scale is nice. You can see it at the bottom, perhaps if you're really interested. But it's not important. It's about the, it's it's about the code here, right? So messy data is hard to plot in ggplot2. Always, when you see somebody using ggplot2 with a very complex syntax like this, then you know the data is messy. And he or she should first tidy the data, and then you'll see using ggplot2 as a breeze. So I spoke a lot about tidy data already. And tidy data is also a concept by Hitley Wickham, which means that you put exactly one measurement per row. It's also called the long form. And also don't forget that factors are factors. So if you have treatment A and B, um, those are uh, like or, or treatment one and two, then th th those are not numbers one and two. No, these are categor categories. It's uh, so one. It's, you could easily switch the labels. You could easily rename them to A and B, and you you're not going to plot your uh, a line through the different categories. Uh, it's not that category two is twice as much of something as category one. So this category is a, is a factor. It's called a level. It's called an enumeration. It's called a, um, a category. All right? Factors are factors. And you already see in the tidy data logo that we have more like a graph, uh, like a data frame like this, which is the broad form or in, in the messy data form, and we're going to uh, convert it to the, the tidy data form, to the long form. All right, but we need to light, load the library tidier for that. We do. So I'll show you here, so the, the messy data frame. We're going to use the function gather, which is made exactly to do this. So we gather all, uh, all the columns of messy data. The column names, I want to name them as replicate. And the values that were in the data frame, I want to call them value. Then I'm going to display this tidy data frame using the Nitro cable function. So here we get all the replicates, here we get all the values. And of course, like replicates, we, we can change the name easily. You can even remove the column. Uh, in this example, that's just fine. Sometimes you want to have those unique identifiers that you want to specify replicates. So I'll leave it be here, but you, you can remove it in this example. Of course, like like replicate z1 yeah th this is all fine this is great and then if you have tidy data you see that it's rather easy to plot it and you're going to ggplot the data frame the clean data frame its values as a histogram so aes is aesthetic and aesthetic is the values uh, you're going to put at the scales in this case for a histogram at the x-axis we're going to plot the values uh, that's, that's not a categorical thing, and that automatically at the y axis it will count the number of occurrences there. Right, so this is a histogram, and I will no, now show you a density plot. But you say close to the exact syntax, here you go. I go, go left and right quite a bit. Up, 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 up. 
actually can remove x equals value here and we use exactly the same syntax to ggplot from the tidy data frame its values as a density plot because the grammar of graphics is a consistent grammar you'll see that the syntaxes are look very alike All right, now we're going to plot this as a this distribution as a box plot but for a box plot you will need to specify what's on the x and the y axis so a box plot at the y axis always puts the distribution displayed as a box plot but at the x axis it expects a category or a factor or a level or a enumeration I'm going to say alright plot the tidy data frame its well unnamed category its values as a box plot and so the, it doesn't make sense to put continuous variables on the x-axis at all uh, box plots are per category and it expects a category at the x-axis so that's why you have to specify there is no category at the x-axis we can also plot a violin plot which is like a density plot um, for categories which is exactly the same syntax again and so I hold back and forth you see the violin plot is exactly the same syntax So what I just showed you is with messy data, it's uh, easy to plot right with the, the custom ad hoc function from R, but you have to tidy it up. And I'm going to, but that was very tr tr like the, the simplest example possible. I'm not going to uh, increase the complexity of the examples. Now I'm going to add two treatments, A and B, and again we have thousands random draw randomly like draws from the random distribution random normal distribution and you see it takes some time for me to, to, to actually get it so I make a first I make a data frame that's too big then I'm going to give the columns their names and then I'm going to put in these cells the values A and B and now we have our messy data frame and so this is more this makes more sense there you'll see this more already uh, that that for per treatment you store all the measurements but this is not tidy data. data. Tidy data should have exactly one measurement per row. And plotting this without ggplot2 is easy again. So uh, I will show you that so there's histogram at the bottom. Again, I don't make take any effort to make it look look pretty. I'm not gonna like, so you can't read that the, the axis is terrible and there's no no f no color and you see the uh, but I don't care. It's about the code in this presentation. So I'm just going to take the first uh, row I'm going to plot that as numeric values and then I'm going to take the second row as numeric values and then I use add equals true and it will overlap the histograms yeah, that's easy to do without ggplot2 and this is messy data you, 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 then you'll fall back to this behavior so I'll show you how to do the same plot in ggplot2 and you'll see it's messy so actually I tried very hard to make it as as clean as possible and I can show you that, that if, if I take a look at the axis and the treatments you, it's not it's hard to read and that's just fine uh, so I made a nice plot out of this but I did need to do some a, a lot of data wrangling here that the thing that you should separate with uh, using tidier so messy data is hard to plot in ggplot2 and I cannot imagine a beginner programmer being able to come up with this syntax so I think it's um, so I, I understand that people fall back to ggplot2 now but the problem is not is again it's not ggplot2 that is the problem it's a problem that you use messy data so we're going to clean up the messy data and actually again you see that also cleaning up messy data it should look clean, it does look clean so I gather of my messy data frame I'm going to uh, take column Z1 to Z1000 I'm going to, the column names are called replicates I want to have a column that's called value which stores the values and here we see our data in tidy form here we see one measurement per row treatments are automatically made uh, factors, replicates are automatically made factors and so that's one thing you could criticize so replicate Z1 so we have a replicate Z1 for treatment A and replicate Z1 for treatment B of course these are completely independent replicates so you sh perhaps you, 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 you should rename replicates by, by some other thing 
uh, like independent names. You could easily remove the column, it's not used in this example. You can safely remove it for there. Alright, but this is what Gather gives you. Right? So you could like clean up your data even more. Uh, but this is this is already tidy data. We can plot this awesomely. I'll show you in the next slide. So here we're going to plot those two. Uh, so we're going to plot our tidy data frame, its values, with a different fill per treatment, so a different color per treatment, as a histogram. And we're not going to position them stacked, we're going to position them at identity, which we're going to overlap them. Also in this plot I did not take any effort to make this semi-transparent and add a nice title and so on. And this is how you, this is the base plot you want. And this doesn't look uh, that hard at all anymore, it's very close to what you intend to do. And also now, if we're going to plot this for a density plot, you see that oh, very few things change. Uh, you want to plot the data frames, their values, uh, separated by their treatment, and uh, display the, the treatment as the different fill color, and their th th those values, their density. And now we can also plot them as a box plot, and again we're going to use the same syntax. Now also these syntaxes are alike. The only thing that changes is that on a box plot at the x-axis you put a category. It doesn't make sense to put a line through this, uh, to put a tr fix and fit a trend line through these two box plots. That's, that's uh, re weird. So we're going to say right at the x-axis we're going to plot the, the categories, in this case the treatments, and at the y-axis we're going to display the values. So we're going to plot our tidy data frames their values separated by treatment as a box plot. And we can also do this for a violin plot, which is also exactly the same syntax. Alright, so this is a, the, the third, and this is a, this is a um, special example, so I, so I think many beginners overlook this. So please take a good look at the code, because there's, this is messy data. It's not completely tidy data, so please take a look and see if you can find it out for yourself. So what I'll be making is I'm making a data frame and the treatments are now numbers 1 and 2 so you could call them A and B but also 1 and 2 should be fine and they are fine category labels actually so it's just fine well done, well done, well programmed I put one measurement per row great, I call them treatment and value already there's no unique treatment identifier but that's that won't, that's not a problem here. so I hope you can see it because if not um, this probably discourages you to use ggplot2 uh, because the, there is one minor thing you have overlooked and we'll now show you how this looks in um, with the, if you don't use ggplot2 this is rather straightforward still to plot like it's it's not not the nicest thing but you say alright I'm going to make a histogram of our messy data frame uh, where for the treatment when it equals 1 and then I'm going to make a his histogram of that messy data frames for the treatments that are 2 and that this is column 2, this is wh where the values are and I'm going to overlap them by adding is true and so messy data that's still e e rather easy, you just uh, separate the treatments yourself which can be done and in ggplot2 this is um, something goes wrong so I use exactly the same syntax as I showed you in the earlier slides when I separated by treatment A and B. But in this example there is no treatment A and B. I expect to have different colors per treatment. But there is no treatment 1 and 2 here. There's also no legend that indicates there are two treatments. It's all grey. So something did go wrong. And this is something that beginners will struggle with. So probably I'm not going to um, Oh, uh, I, I sh so you can fix this in ggplot2 if you really, 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 really want to. Uh, you can separate, uh, you, you can plot it, but you see it again, it, it is, this is completely hard syntax to get right, so I do get the, the subset of the data frame, I'm going to call that data, and I'm going to, oh yeah, so I'm going to make a G, one ggplot with uh, yes, overlapping positions, I'm going to add the first histogram 
in, which is in red so this is the only thing where, where I use uh, one if I to make it look pretty because I, if I would remove red and blue here it still looks grey but the plotting would be grey but then you wouldn't be convinced that I really succeeded in making this, this plot of two treatments so I'm going to make like a sub data frame which is cleaner and then I'm going to make a histogram of that of its that values in red and then make a second histogram of a subset of the messy data frame which is like cleaner data and plot that value as blues. So if you see again see this then it's not ggplot2 that is hard to use but you've just been using messy data here. I will show you how to clean this up which is not very hard. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the data frame the messy data frame to the, the new clean data frame and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the treatment is a factor and that's, a, that's all I did that's all you should do so here we see the, the, the data frame again this is the tidy data frame it looks exactly the same as the messy data frame but the only difference is that R now knows that treatment 1 or 2 are levels or categories or factors or enumerations that's the only thing uh, th that's the only thing that differs, so it's not displayed in this uh, table at all. Uh, but now you'll see that the syntax will be easy again. Uh, so now I'm going to plot this data frame, its values, with a different filling color per treatment as a histogram, uh, which are uh, overlapping. Uh, so just adding that factor brings you back to the, to the old school um, syntax I already showed you. Also for the density plot, you see, hey, we have exactly the same syntax again. This is also not new. Of course, for the box plot, it's exactly the same syntax again. Also for the half island plot, it's exactly the same syntax again. Uh, so you see that it's 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 great. It's so if you have tidy data with ggplot2, it's very easy to get it right. It's 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 not magic anymore. There's there's little things you need to add, a little, few bells and whistles, and and um, they did it. So plotting tidy data is easy. So this brings me to the conclusions that it's very hard to plot messy data in ggplot2. I think that, and that's the main reason I think why most beginners think ggplot2 is hard. But it's not ggplot2 that is hard. It's their data being messy. So we should teach our students that they should what tidy data is and how to attain it. And that's a separate step that you should use tidier to 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 create tidy data. And also those in the the calls to tidy should also be uh, clean and, and easy to read. But if you have your tidy data, it's easy to plot in ggplot2. So most actually, so perhaps the main the takeaway message of about this presentation is not like how to use ggplot2, but use tidy data. That's that's the most important part here. And don't forget the factors because you get these weird things. Alright, so um, this is a presentation, so uh, there are no questions here. Uh, again, you can find this presentation on a, one of my GitHubs, my science GitHub, but perhaps it will be moved to an R presentation GitHubs. And actually, this meme clearly shows what is uh, what what is it about. One does not simply plot messy data with ggplot2. Uh, you don't plot messy data with ggplot2, and also you, it's not simple to do so. Alright, I hope this presentation was useful to you. And see ya.